Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. This is my full review on the Plaid Model S. If you haven't seen my other video, go check it out. This is the before and after Apex Wraps did the wrap on this Tesla. This Tesla turned out so beautiful after they got a hold of it. Their link will be down in the description. Go show them some love on social media or go check them out. This isn't a sponsored or paid video by them. After looking at the Plaid Model S, the first thing I noticed is the wider body, the wider wheelbase. The other thing I liked about the wheels is they looked more like the Performance Model 3 wheels, but they came in black. Mine had to be powder coated black, and then I added the gold on the lug nut cover. The design is very, very similar. They look like they're a little bit more aerodynamic because they're more flat and probably offer better range quality. It was crazy to see how similar the Model 3 is to the Plaid Model S now, besides the size and the lights. With the Plaid Model S, you're not only getting beauty, but performance all in one package. When you're at the charging station and you're by yourself, you can charge at 900 miles an hour, which is unparalleled for an electric vehicle. It's just as fast charging, splitting the power as our Model 3 is by itself. That's amazing. As you can see here, the frunk is still massive. It's got great storage. This is with it completely open here. The seats were definitely premium. They look a lot different than what the Model 3 looks like and the original Model S. They moved to a haptic system with the buttons to open the door and the window controls are pretty much the same, but most of it has changed to a haptic system. Even on the steering wheel, it's got haptic control buttons. And the center console is a great improvement I don't know if you ever drove in the earlier Model S's, but it was like a bowling alley at the bottom. There was a lot of dead space. And now they have two wireless chargers that'll easily fit an iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max, which is what I have. The rear controls are really intuitive for the back and you have you know, audio controls, you have the controls for the air conditioning. And then once again, you can see this premium seat in the back there. It's uh, perforated, I'm sure, for heat. One of the things I absolutely love about the Plaid Model S and the new Model S design in general is that the infotainment system is just like the Model 3 now, where it's landscape instead of vertical. And then also how you have the control panel right above the steering wheel. I can see why Elon put the yoke in it though, because the yoke promotes a lot better visibility. This is another cool feature in the back seat. They actually have wireless charging pads as well for people sitting in the back. It's really easy to pull down that center in order to use that. There's a ton of room in the back. It felt like I was in the front seat. They definitely did a great job on adding that. One of the other things I liked a lot about the infotainment system is the gesture system. It's a mainly based on gesture system. So you've got all the buttons down at the bottom and on the side, but you can swipe from the side, you can swipe up and it was a lot more responsive, a lot faster. I loved that it had the map as the primary viewing thing. Um, from what I understand, it's supposed to be able to resize each of the screens, but I wasn't able to figure out how to do that. The games were very responsive and punchy. The yoke steering wheel seemed like the steering in general on the buggy game uh, were a lot better. Now, as you can see here, it took me a minute to figure out how to get the side cameras up. It's definitely a lot different from the Model 3 in that regard. On the Model 3, you just swipe up. Also, as Laura was backing out right here, she was trying to figure out how to put it in reverse and forward, and you have to swipe on the side here, as you can see. So you swipe, that brings up reverse, and then you swipe up, and it puts you into drive, and then you can see the P for park. From what Elon Musk was saying on Twitter, I thought that it was gonna be able to sort of figure out what you were doing as far as whether you're going forward or reversing. That didn't seem to be the case. And as you can see here, this is Laura getting more and more comfortable driving the Plaid Model S with the Oaks steering wheel. I think on the Cybertruck, if we do have the option, we're gonna get a full steering wheel. The controls are a lot more in depth than the Model 3. You've got a lot more control over everything. Um, it's still in uh, track mode when we took it out. So that was showing the launch process. The suspension seems like it's got a lot more controls than the Model S. I don't have much experience in there other than my video of where they gave us a loaner one. 
The charging area is pretty much the same. Autopilot, the features weren't working because Scott's Model S, it wasn't updating. So as Plaid Model S came, it will not connect to Bluetooth, won't connect to wireless. They were supposed to send a technician out, but hadn't yet. So we didn't get to show full self-driving in action, but I doubt that it's much different. I liked the service center a little bit better on there. And uh, this one's on software 2021-12.4.3. The Plaid Model S was a beautiful vehicle inside and out. It was an amazing engineering feat to have a vehicle go zero to 60 in less than two seconds. And yes, you definitely have to experience it. As far as my personal opinion, I love the Model 3 and I probably like it a little bit better just because of its compactness. And if you've got the money to get the Plaid Model S and you wanna go for it, definitely go for it. It's something that I don't think anybody would regret if they're a fan of the Model S. I've just always been a bigger fan of the Model 3 design. Uh, hopefully this video was entertaining. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next videos.